Hey, Flashpoint Army, are you looking for truth and news all in the spirit of faith? Well, don't forget to click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to stay connected. Not a part of the Flashpoint Army? Sign up for the latest email updates at govictory.com slash FP sign up and join us as we stand for truth and freedom. With me today is a pleasure to have Pastor Jack Hibbs, Chino Hills, great to meet Calvary you. Chapel. Listen, I, I got to tell you, several years ago, I saw this video with you and Charlie Kirk, and I'd heard of Charlie, and I'd heard of you, but I thought, oh, okay, I'll see what he has to say. And boy, it was, it was like, a, it was over an hour long, but I was riveted listening, it, and that really opened, around that season, a lot of things yeah. opened up. Uh, I, I'm obviously for Charlie and for you too. So I want to, let's pick up kind of somewhere in the middle there. Uh, we're post COVID. We just come out of COVID. Pastors now are trying to figure out what do I do? What do I do? I'm being questioned. A lot of pastors were caught off guard with that. Do we close our church and listen to the government or do we stand up? What is the most crucial part about pastoring when it comes to standing up. But the most important thing of all is, the Bible's very clear that there's a time for us to obey God, and when that time, when man challenges us to, chal to, to disobey God, uh, we always side with obeying God. Do you obey Gavin Newsom in my state, sure. or do you obey God? And so uh, it became quickly, clearly, uh, a case in California where the church had to, had to be open. Uh, I encouraged all the pastors in California to open up. Uh, we're, a lot of people don't know about this, but 1,200 pastors opened up with us on the same Wonderful. Sunday. And um, what's remarkable is that we, we took a stand based upon the Bible. We were not shaking our fist at the government, but I did send a note, a video announcement actually to the governor, announcing to him with all due respect, Mr. Governor, this is the role of the church. Number one, you have failed to address the church as essential or non-essential, which, by the way, allowed me to define. Right, if he didn't define the position of the church, then I believe it's up to the pastor to remind sure. the governing powers that the church is not essential or non-essential. The church is transcendent. So in light of that, Mr. Governor, we're going to have our doors open. We're going to be ministering to the needs of the community. If you need anything, let us know, but we're going forward. And that's exactly what happened. And uh, we wound up baptizing over 3,000 people on, on three different Saturdays. We had to break it up, 1,000 people a, a weekend, uh, because so many people rushed to our church because they were looking for hope in time of crisis. And, and I know, I can't speak for any other ministries because I don't know about them, but I know that by taking a stand, uh, we saw people who were on the brink of suicide sure. come to church as one last hope and wind up having their lives transforming. And, and uh, your church has grown since that time. Oh, well, you know, we averaged about 10,000 people every weekend anyway, right. but now it's, now it's 15,000 people every weekend on a regular basis. So, yes. And, and I, every pastor I talk to that stood up in a standing yep. up without, like you said, shaking yeah. your fist in the air and, you know, <laughs> right. reporting violence and everything, you know, th their churches have because people want to know, just give me something, to, an anchor to hold on right. to. And so that's what, that's what we're seeing as well is churches are exploding in growth, but it always comes back to the pastor. I know the old saying, like pastor, like pew. It's if, true. If they see the pastor standing up, they're going to stand up. It's true. I, I don't believe that church is, uh, is just on Sunday. I think if you're really a follower of Christ, it's every day of the week. And look, I'm a full-time pastor. I don't show up on Monday morning to Raytheon or DuPont. I don't show up at Disneyland. A lot of our employees work at Disneyland. Monday's my day off. They're stepping into the lion's den. But it's my job on Sundays and Wednesdays to equip them to cope with this dark world that's out there. And only the truth can prepare them to do that. So Let's talk about something that pastors are now facing that just a few years ago they didn't have to face. That's uh, what do I do with this transgender issue? And they're coming to my church. Do I 
What, how do I respond to that as a pastor? Yeah, transgenderism, just like adultery, just like a bad thought, just like pride, just like anything else, number one, is a sin. It needs to be repented of. But here's the good news. The way that you present that is this, is that you announce to people, um, parents and kids alike, how do you know that your thought process is right on this? Five years ago, you'd never heard about this. Right. So how do you know you're on the right track? Sure. The greatest exposure of truth is time. Lies over time always fall apart. If you cannot have your ears pierced without parental consent, then how is it that you think that you can go have this done to you at the suggestion of a teacher or at the grooming of others? So what we, in fact, Dr. Frank Turek and I just did a message on this uh, where it was very well received, where can, we're asking to slow down, read the Bible for 30 days, stop taking injections, cancel that appointment, and let the Bible speak to you for 30 days and find out that you have actually been created in the image of God. God loves you. He doesn't make any mistakes. And then here's the point. Do you really want to transition? If you really want to transition, we've got the right message for you. Jesus Christ announces to us yeah. that he will give you the eternal, never needing to change back to transition that will save your life for now and forever. And believe it or not, when people hear that level of the truth, they may immediately uh, in, the, in the moment say, what, what is this? What, what am I hearing? But when they think about it, uh, they begin to actually ask more questions. So you want to lovingly but accurately with a winsome spirit tell them the truth. Right. I think we're doing people a great disservice and a great injury when we pat people on the back and say, well, I love you, do whatever you want. Yeah. I well, because I love you, I'm not going to encourage you to do whatever you sure. want. Sure, that's <laughs> good. All right, so I, I'm, I know we're running out of time, yeah. but I, I want to ask, we have we work with Rick Green a lot. Love him. Biblical Civics. And we have thousands of our uh, viewers that have downloaded that. And you're in that. Yeah. So speak to Biblical Civics about why it's important for the church today. Well, and when I say the church, I mean believers. Listen. You know, why, why should we get involved in How that? about this? How about not only the church, not only the believers, but caring citizens? Because what Rick Green does is so excellent. Remember this, and he points it out clearly. Our governing document is, is first, not the U.S. Constitution, although it's epic. Right. Our governing document, our, our true birth certificate was the Mayflower Compact. It's true. And if anybody wants to talk about, you know, some years ago we heard a particular president say that this nation was not founded on Christian principles. Wait a minute. The Mayflower Compact, before they got off the boat, they signed a, a two-paragraph document saying that we've come to advance the gospel and this is our governing body politic. And so pastors need to step up to where pastors used to be in this great nation. The epicenter of any village, any town, and any city... Boston, Philadelphia, Braintree, no matter where you're at, was the pastor, was the church. That's why the East Coast, all those crazy roads lead to the center of where a church once stood. We need to get back to that. We, we had a first and second awakening. We need a third awakening. If there's any hope, it's, it, and we will continue to do physics, uh, physics, <laughs> civics, and we will continue to do voter registration and promote the right candidates. But why do we do that? Because we know the answer is not in the White House. It's not in the State House. The answer comes from the from God's house. Amen. And then the State House is affected. Then the White House is affected. Wow, so good, Pastor Jack. Thank you for Thanks. coming by. How can people follow and stay JackHibbs.com. Super simple. JackHibbs.com. You know, Jack Hibbs, uh, Rick. What a great pastor. I agree. He's a great guy. And even though uh, he was in your Biblical Citizenship course, I still like him. Uh, <laughs> listen, and, I want to go ahead. And he hasn't been fired yet. You think, he you know, hasn't. hanging out with guys like Gene Bailey and Rick Green. I, know, I mean, he's I know. It's bad for his reputation, but he's doing all right, I guess. Yes. He is. <laughs> all right. So it's a great opportunity to tell you, you guys need to go on biblicalcivics.com. You can buy the course, Rick, or they can go download it. Right. And what does it cost? Yeah, and whatever they want to donate is fine. You know, it could be a dollar to $10,000. Whatever they want to donate is fine. If they donate up to $60, they get the digital version of the course for completely for free. And then if they want to donate over that, they get those DVDs that you were just holding up and a workbook. And I'll tell you, Gene, every week in that class, it's an eight-week class, every week Jack Hibbs has some golden nuggets. You know, my favorite one is actually in our roll-in, which you've seen, of course, when he talks about biblical citizenship is stewardship. 
And that probably summarizes the whole course better than anything else I could say, because it really is living out the parable of the talents and being good stewards of what we've been given. How do we live out being good citizens in a biblical way and in our particular country and our constitution? And that's what the course covers, biblicalcivics.com, folks. Uh, and, and by the way, when you do donate there, that goes to our nonprofit, to Patriot Academy, and it allows us to teach more people across the country, puts more people through the class. We train pastors, teachers, students, legislators, all the different things we're doing to influence the culture and to restore biblical civics in our culture. Your donation when you get those DVDs and that workbook helps to make that happen. All right, so go biblicalcivics.com. Join, there's thousands, Rick, thousands that have signed up, and I need you, we need you, America needs you to sign up for that. All right.